All right, just a quick uh, response to the um, physics question asked in the last video. I guess it'll be down there. Post this as a reply to that question. How about a simple question, you know, how do these space probes, you know, accelerate, get more energy leaving a plant than when they arrived at a plant? Like, how do we use that to um, accelerate the probes we send into space and all that kind of stuff? All right, and uh, yeah, I got some great answers. Uh, the two best answers, I guess I'll post over here, um, links to their channel pages anyway. Um, really grateful. Um, it's really nice that people participated. And then with comments suspended, it works better somehow. Uh, but anyway, um, yeah, the answers, you know, the, there's a link, I'll post a link to this NASA page, but it's kind of confusing. I mean, it doesn't even say it in this, in this simple way as it should. I mean, what, what's, what's basically happening is gravity is kind of irrelevant to the equation. All gravity is, is a hook that the probe is using. Um, but what the probe is really stealing is the orbital energy of the body. So its orbit around the sun, it's obviously moving at a very rapid rate in that orbit and the probe is basically stealing a piece of that energy. And uh, so that's really what it's about. It's they're not the, the, the slingshot analogy sort of is bullshit. It's um, it's just basically um, you know capturing the momentum of the body as it's moving around the sun. It's not capturing gravity. It's not stealing any gravitational energy, at least from the body. Maybe from the sun, but not from the body. But anyway, so it's a pretty good explanation. Um, I still have some thought in my head that the the thing they did with the moon, it doesn't really make sense because the moon isn't really moving that fast. I mean, it orbits only once a year, and you're saying, but I mean, once a year at the distance it is from the, you know, Earth is probably fast enough to gain some energy, and um, then also the return trip from the moon, you would be enjoying the gravitational pull of the Earth, which would also accelerate you. So that's why the trip home is shorter than the trip to the moon. Um, there's lots of little interesting thing. I mean, there's a cartoon on this that the page links to that's really s confusing to me, though, because they basically have this analogy, okay, you throw a tennis ball at 30 miles an hour at a train going 50 miles an hour, and they have the ball leaving at 130 miles an hour, and that really doesn't make sense to me. I could get the 80 mile an hour thing, but I don't get the 130 mile an hour thing, but I don't want to, you know, you, you don't really have to provide an answer for that. I'm just going to sort of ignore it, but if you, you know, if you feel compelled, go ahead. But to me, that cartoon, that just doesn't make sense. It just seems inaccurate to me because then you get an extra 50 miles an hour that, you know, it's like you count the 50 twice somehow. I don't get that. Um, so anyway, that, that's what I mean by the article not being very helpful because I think that just creates some confusion. At least it did for me. Um, but anyway... Uh, let's see if there's anything else. Um, yeah, the only other point I wanted, to, you know, that I did learn on the page was sort of interesting because I really, didn't really, I really didn't think about it. But um, you know, it's not, you know, when we send a spaceship out, it's not only the problem of escaping Earth's gravity. I mean, that's just only one hurdle. Um, because when you try to go out into space, the problem is you got this sun, is is really a problem because apparently, you know, you can only get so far out, um, and then you end up just you know, unless you've got plenty of fuel, you know, your, your momentum is slowly, you, you're, you're, you lose acceleration as you go out into space because the sun keeps trying to pull you back. And so, um, you know, there's a point you'll reach where you just end up being a satellite around the sun because you'll just stop moving forward, <laughs> away. Um, you just run out of energy. Um, so I thought that was sort of interesting. And so the whole thing of this you know, looking at these outer planets was really dependent on this whole idea of stealing the orbital energy of these other planets. And if we didn't do that, you know, as a practical matter, we wouldn't have been able to get those probes out there because we wouldn't have been able to put enough fuel on them to, uh, you know, give them enough escape of velocity to escape the sun's gravity. Um, but anyway, interesting stuff for me anyway. Um, you know, I like sort of thinking about things without reading. You know, I mean, I guess I could have just done the research and left it at that. But it was just sort of interesting to get different ideas in, in an environment where people weren't just reading stuff. But, you know, eventually you have to read stuff and get the right answer from a, somebody who knows the answer. But sometimes it's good to think outside of the box, so to speak, to steal a cliche. And um, so anyway, it was... Uh, 
It was a rewarding experience. I am um, educated. <laughs> Thank you very much.